We saw the other day when we were walking on the earth and the sun. When the sun was directly overhead and it, as if the rays from the sun are falling directly perpendicularly right on the earth. Do we remember? Now, it's not in all the places of the earth that the sun rays actually fall perpendicularly on the earth. I wonder why that is. It is because the earth is a sphere. I'll show you the demonstration. Now, the earth is not flat. As we see here, but the earth is more or less like a sphere, like you see here. If the earth were flat, as you see here, then all the rays from the sun will fall perpendicularly upon the earth, as you see here. They will all be perpendicular. But since the earth is not flat, but rather like a sphere, we find that the sun's rays don't fall perpendicularly in all the parts of the earth. Like as you see here, it's just this one, this ray that falls perpendicularly on the earth. But look at this one, it's not perpendicular because of the shape of the earth. And here, look at this one here. Here too, the rays are not perpendicular. So, as we see, because the earth is a sphere, there are places on the earth, like here, we see here and here, the rays never ever fall perpendicularly on those parts of the earth. But here, where the earth is directly where the sun rays directly fall. The sun rays directly fall on the earth. Here, the rays fall perpendicularly. When the rays of the sun are perpendicular, as you see here, they are actually much hotter than the rays here. Where they are not perpendicular. These rays are not as hot as the perpendicular rays. I'll show you something else. When the rays of the sun are perpendicular, they are much more concentrated in a certain area and therefore it gets much hotter there just like I have it on my paper can you please help to trace the spot where the light is shining Now, when the rays are falling obliquely like this, find it. It's the same light, but then it covers much more area. So, do, can you help me to trace? that the light is shining so we see right away that So we see here when the 
light was perpendicular directly on the paper you see the area that it covered smaller area so the light was much more concentrated than here when the light fell from an angle or obliquely and see all this area was covered by the light so we find here that the same light covers a greater space than we have here therefore this area will be hotter far hotter than here because here the light is much more concentrated than we have here so perpendicular rays are hotter far hotter than oblique rays I'll show you the same idea on a chart so look at this chart on both of these illustrations we have the same number of rays falling that one two three four five okay. one two three four five but here they are falling perpendicularly the rays are falling per perpendicularly on the earth here the rays are falling completely the earth but now look at the area they cover look at the area so it cover here where they fall perpendicularly they cover smaller area they cover a smaller area and therefore the heat here is really really concentrated compare that with this area the same number of rays you can see a larger area is heated up therefore this larger area that is heated up by the same number of rays is not as hot as this smaller area where the heat is actually concentrated where the rays fall perpendicularly as we see here So we see that the perpendicular rays, actually the area that the perpendicular rays fall much hotter because the heat is far more concentrated than where they fall completely, where a larger area is relatively heated up. The same idea can be shown on this chart. We can see the same idea here on this chart. We have here the perpendicular rays and here the public rays. Let's count the number of rays we have here. Perpendicular rays. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Now, the same area, let's count here, that we call the rays, yeah, the rays are falling perpendicularly. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we see here, these rays will be hotter. The perpendicular rays are hotter than the oblique rays. Now, most times, those perpendicular rays, those hot, very hot perpendicular rays, actually fall on the equator. The perpendicular rays, most times, they, are, they fall on the equator here. So, 
So let's see another thing about the perpendicular ray and oblique rays. We know that the atmosphere, the earth is covered by the atmosphere and we have layers and layers of atmosphere over the earth. Now, the rays from the sun have to pass through the atmosphere before they get to the earth. The oblique rays have to pass through much more atmosphere. Oh, the oblique rays. They have to pass through much more atmosphere. Just like you see here. Then the perpendicular rays that you see here. With it, just this. So you compare that. I see the oblique rays pass through much more atmosphere than the perpendicular rays. So the result of this is that the perpendicular rays lose much more heat to the atmosphere. Public rays lose much more heat to the atmosphere than the perpendicular rays do. So before they get to the surface of the earth, the oblique rays would have lost much heat, much more heat than the perpendicular rays. So this is another reason why the earth gets so much hotter in those places where the perpendicular rays fall. So this is another characteristic of the earth. Another way that the shape and formation of the earth affects us and affects our lives.